Des Moines and all of Central Iowa, welcome to Max World Live. Max World is your world. Every day we talk about the issues and topics that matter most to you. And as always, it's your voice we want to hear in Max World. So join the conversation by calling 515-244-0077. And now, here's the host of Max World Live, J. Michael McCoy. Yabba dabba doo, seven minutes after three on the 22nd day of December in the Lord's year 2015. I'm J. Michael McCoy, and this is the Tuesday edition of Max World Live. Usually Tom Coates comes in at four o'clock and we talk politics. Well, he will be here at four o'clock. I will not be. And so he and Brad Zahn are going to take the second hour and catch us up on what's going on in politics. I am leaving early because I am uh, a part of our Christmas celebration at Lutheran Church of Hope, uh, West Des Moines campus, and I need to be there by 5 o'clock. And so my wonderful compadre, Mr. Roloff, has given me permission to vacate the premises. So like Elvis, I have left the building shortly after 4 o'clock. Now, we are getting an unconfirmed report, and I want to I stress that to you. I don't want you to later on say, oh, Max said that blank. No, I'm a journalist, and I'm just trying to give you an unconfirmed report. I have reached out to the campaign director here in Iowa for Mike Huckabee. We have two conflicting stories. We have one that the Des Moines Register released about six hours ago that says Huckabee has agreed to actually move to Iowa which is what he did four years ago or eight years ago when he won the caucus. Um, he, he, he and his family actually moved here, and then it was a lot easier for him to spend time with his campaign and his supporters, et cetera, et cetera. The uh, Republican presidential candidate cited internal polling as a source for optimism. He said in a poll of 5,000 caucus goers, Statewide last week, 75% said they haven't decided who they're going to support in the caucus. Another 58% couldn't even say what candidate they were leaning towards. Huckabee Senior Communication Advisor Hogan Gildley added that that's good news for the governor. And he's going to come and live in Iowa until February 3rd caucuses. Now, the, that's confirmed. That's the Des Moines Register. Not that everything that comes out of their mouth is golden, but I, I, I believe this to be true. Did you also hear Lindsey Graham dropped out? Yeah, Lindsey Graham dropped out. We know that. But we're also getting a report that Mike Huckabee has dropped out. Now, I find that difficult to believe that six hours ago, well, of course, that wouldn't be six hours ago. They actually got that story yesterday at the uh, Iowa Veterans Home in Marshalltown. Um, but... We'll keep you up to date. We'll try to give you uh, any information that we hear. As of right now, let's let's not say that Huckabee has dropped out because I don't think it's true. I I don't. That's not a confirmed report, and that doesn't sound like something Huckabee would do. But we're in touch. We're talking to the people that we need to talk to, and we'll keep you updated. Have you heard the latest from uh, Mr. Trump calling uh, Hillary Clinton? A liar and then calling Bernie Sanders a uh, commie and a manic. I don't know about the manic thing so much, but uh, yeah, he's a communist, right? Well, he, he's a socialist. Okay, he's a socialist. And, and socialism is one nickel away from a whole dollar on communism. Right, right. But that's not a very uh, nice thing to say to somebody. No, it's not. Uh, The word communist uh, doesn't have a pretty history in America. We don't we don't look so good. But I I don't I don't know if anybody under the age of 35 
would understand that. I mean, no, I, I would I would agree with you. I don't, I don't think we do. In fact, we were talking with uh, Judge Saul of My Prepper Direct after the show yesterday. Um, they're working on uh, there's some stuff in the works, and you know we were looking at uh, other communists uh, throughout American history, and uh, I don't know that people quite understand the significance of that. So, what is your nickel? response why is that significant so, that someone would be a communist do you know what uh, trump accused hillary of lying about yeah um, um let me think she said that they were using donald trump in isis um recruitment recruitment mm. videos and uh for whatever reason uh one side believes that that cannot be proved and therefore donald trump decided to call her a liar so I don't I don't know if you can do that. Now they have they do have uh, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton in ISIS uh, recruitment v- videos that that everybody has seen on the YouTube. But uh, nobody has seen them do one with Donald Trump. Of course, do- they'll do one. Somebody will do one. You know, it could be made in downtown Indianola for all we know. And then it'll be put on the uh, the the Google I love to say that, the Google. I know it's not the Google. I just like saying that. Google. The Google. And YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. And then, of course, Hillary Clinton will claim she was right, and Donald Trump owes her an apology. And, guys, this is getting ridiculous, and we're, 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 we're 10 months, 11 months away. I mean, Trump and Hillary, I mean, this is... Well, according to Trump, uh, he says he hasn't even started on Hillary yet. The, you know, his, his attacks is, hasn't even started. So it's, if he's the nominee, it's bound to get much more interesting. Well, or is it going to get just pathetically awful? Well, it, 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 anything Trump says about Hillary is likely to be the truth because he will be the only one that will have the testicular fortitude to call her out on some of her lies. And her list of lies is many. In fact, they have a, uh, you know complete websites dedicated to just Hillary's lies. <sighs> Known lies. Yeah, but, you know, my, my challenge with that is everybody lies. You know, I mean... I just wish I, I just wish we could have a decent campaign, but we're not going to have a decent campaign. Well, Mac, it, it, Brian Williams at NBC got fired or let go or put on leave for basically lying about something that Hillary done the exact same thing when she was lying about uh, being under fire in an airplane going into uh, what was it Yugoslavia, and. And Brian Williams lost his job because of that. So, you know, it, it, and, and, but and the low information voters don't care. And NBC used the excuse for that, that that we can't trust Brian Williams judgment, that the people tuning in want to trust their news anchor, that he's telling the truth and he's not in, inserting himself into the story. So if we're going to hold our news anchors to that standard, don't you think we ought to step up and hold our POTUS, President of the United States, to that standard? But who? who uh, yes, Frank. The I media? The, the, the media. The American people. Well, here, the, the, the American people. We dem- lost. Me- we, well, we, wait. We, we lost a First Amendment-driven media 20 years ago. The American people need to demand of the media certain standards. That's how we hold the media accountable. We stop watching. We start stop buying their products. We stop watching their commercials. And that way, you get across to the media that we're not going to tolerate your, your lies and, and, and your uh, mal- malfeasance of political coverage. All right. All right. Let, let's walk this through. N- nice idea there, Trump. Now, walk it through. How does that happen? So you, you, you go on every network and you say, we're not responding to any of your advertising. We're going to boycott your advertising. No. I'm talking the American people by their viewership. They have Nielsen ratings, and by oh, that, that, that doesn't mean anything. Well, listen. There's about three people that watch MSNBC. You know, I mean, Fox is the big dog in the room, but yet Fox doesn't, you know, tell the truth a hundred percent of the time. I mean, none of them, you know, tell the truth all the time. But you, the, the American people, the American voter needs to hold the media personally accountable for not telling the truth by their dollars, by, 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 uh, you know, solicitation of their sponsors. That's how you get across to these people. You mean business. 
Frank, it, it all looks good on paper, but it won't work. It won't work. The, the, these people are not going to be impacted by that unless there's a huge, huge movement. Look at Volkswagen. Volkswagen just came out six months ago and said they absolutely lied to the consumer, to the Consumer Protection Agency, to the National Car Automobile Association, et cetera, et cetera. And yet Volkswagen sales stay pretty good. The American people simply don't care about fraud and deception anymore. Unless it's done by a conservative. Well, I understand that. Harry Reid uh, basically lied about Mitt Romney, told a bald-faced lie that someone had told him that Mitt Romney hadn't paid his taxes for 15 years. Somebody on ABC, uh, might have been George Stephanopoulos, I don't remember who, confronted him way after the fact, and he basically acknowledged that he lied about Mitt Romney, and his defense was, well, he ain't president, is he? So whatever whatever means will justify their end. Must have worked, because Mitt Romney's not the president, and Harry Reid's still in power. I I I think this is a battle. You know, it's a classic battle of good versus evil. It's God versus the accuser. It's the conservative, God-loving, gun-holding-on-to, Bible-belt kind of guy and gal. And over here, it's I'll do and say whatever I need to say to win. I'll lie, I'll lie as a politician. I'll lie. It, it doesn't matter. It's good versus evil. If you are a child of God and you recognize that, it's very, very hard to, to lie over and over and over and over again. Because we call ourselves out. We hold ourselves accountable. The liberals, the low information voters, aren't going to hold themselves accountable. They're not. All right. When we come back, a uh, uh, a state court in Massachusetts has ruled that a Catholic school violated the state's anti discrimination law when it rescinded a job offer to a man who had been married to another man. That sounds like Dowling, doesn't it? Just uh, a year later. We'll talk about that and more. A lady gets mugged in Des Moines. Doesn't look pretty. That's live here on The Truth. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can give these grandkids back, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We can help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcastonelive.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. 
I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Twenty-one minutes after three o'clock, the worship music, the holiday worship music, the Christmas worship music of worship director Nathan Thomas at Berean Assembly in Pleasant Hill. Love that man. Love his music. All right, uh, we have something to give away. Now we had uh, a couple guests yesterday. We did. I don't think Luke Tim would let us give a gun away. No, I don't think the FCC would let us give a gun away, or the. I don't think they, I don't think you can give a gun away. Yeah, I bet you can't. But we can give a survival pack. Yes, we can. So our good friends at MyPrepperDirect.com, MyPrepperDirect.com, um, want to give away um, to the third caller at our regular call-in line. 244-0077. That's a 515 area code, 515-244-0077. The five-day survival backpack. This has food, water, first aid, and warmth. It's 64 pieces all together. Uh, it includes... 32 servings of gourmet entrees, a portable stove, stainless steel cup, squeeze, flashlight, the five-in-one survival wristle, 42-piece first aid kit, waterproof matches, that Mylar blanket that you talked about uh, that'll keep somebody warm, emergency poncho, and my personal favorite, playing cards, just because it might get boring over those five days. So this is a five-day survival kit backpack. This is a $79 value uh, we'd like to give to the third caller absolutely free at 515-244-0077. Uh, go ahead and call in now. And I think that's a, uh, uh, I think that's a 75 or $70? $79, yeah. $79 value. Yep. Um, and uh, for those uh, who are interested in buying a product like that, you can go to MyPrepperDirect.com and you can uh, purchase one. And when you do so, in checkout, enter the promo code TRUTH and you'll receive an additional 10% off of that product or any of the products available at MyPrepperDirect. Yeah. Now, Frank, com. when you get a winner, let me talk to him on the air. It's Wendy. Okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Wendy, congratulations. Thank you very much for listening. You have a uh, five-day uh, emergency kit. It's a, it's a little backpack. Camo. Camo. Camo <laughs> backpack. And uh, it's got all that great stuff in it. Makes a great Christmas gift. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely outstanding. Now, Jill King has asked a very, 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 very important question. Yes. What happens on day six? Um, we don't like to talk about it. We're rescued by then, aren't we? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, here we are at the top of this big building. Yes. And we've been cut off from any way to get down. The elevators are shut off. The staircases are blocked because of the damage from the airplane flying into the side of the building. Yes. And we only have five days. So we've got to be rescued by six. Or you could just buy a larger survival kit. You could. But I don't know that they could ship it to you if you were in an emergency. That's why it's better to be prepared than be scared, Mac. And so if you go to MyPrepperDirect.com uh, now uh, and get these survival kits. And we talked about this uh, yesterday. The food is actually really, really good. Yeah, that old um, stuff was great. Yeah. So but, anyway. But I, I've got a way we can get it up here. How can we get it up here? Who, who's the most reliable delivery service in the world? The United States Postal Service. Wrong. Jimmy John's. Jimmy <laughs> So we'd order some Jimmy John's. <laughs> yes. Along with some another survival yes. kit. Yes. Survival kit. Yes. And then we'd have Jimmy John's and we'd have survival. Right. We'd have Actually, the, we wouldn't need the Jimmy John's. That's right, because we'd have all the good food we need and water and all but that. They, well, I don't think they'll deliver something else. I think you got to have their sandwiches to get them to deliver. You do, yeah. Yeah. So that freaky we fast the, delivery. Just right? throw them out the window, I guess. Yeah. Feed them to the ducks. I could see that. I would like to see a Jimmy John's delivery man climbing up through the fire and the rubble. Oh, they'd do it. And they'd They're be quick. Awesome. And they'd They're be awesome. Quick. It's only one problem with that. What's that? I don't like their sandwiches. Oh, well. <laughs> I really don't. I'm just not a big fan of their sandwiches. All right, Dateline, Des Moines, Iowa. A woman told police three people mugged her as she walked home from a country club early Monday morning. This is so funny. This is so funny. This is so funny. All right, so from that line I just read to you, 
you're thinking this woman was walking home from one of the high-end country clubs, right? Right. Urbandale, West Des Moines. Uh, what's the one out there, the big fancy one with all the gates around it? Glen Oaks. Oh, sure, yeah. Right. She was walking home from the Highland Park Country Club. Is that not as nice? Oh, it's a bar. There's no... It's just called the Country Club. Oh, this is like a... Uh, they call them like the Yacht Club or things yeah. like that. It's not really, but uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. What are you doing? Oh, sorry. All right. So anyway, and I'll, who wrote this story? I want to see who wrote. Oh, there's no byline on it. All right. So a woman told police she was mugged after she was walking home from an old fashioned crappy bar Monday morning. A woman told police that two men and a truck. No, two men and a woman jumped out from behind her. As she and a friend were walking home from the Highland Park Country Club at 1221 a.m. Chris, what have I taught you about after midnight? Don't go out. Nothing good happens after midnight. That's right. Don't do it. Now, the pair of victims were at 5th and Euclid Avenue. When the purse was snatched, one of the robbers reportedly carried a black handgun. After they took her purse and left, the woman called her boyfriend to pick her up. Hello, honey. I've been mugged. Come get me. She called police from home, reporting $150, her social security card, her license, and several prescriptions were stolen. No sp- suspects have been identified, and no one was reported injured. I just love journalists from today. See, this person who wrote this story, yes. Chris, doesn't realize that the Highland Country Club is, is a hole-in-the-wall bar. I mean, this is just a straight-line bar been there as long as i can remember it's been there since i moved to des moines in 75 so whoever wrote this story des moines register that's where i got this (laughs) took it off the police report that she was walking home from a country club the highland park country club anyway that's all right it's still sad though yeah it's sad that she got mugged i just one of the reasons i read some of these stories is because they're so poorly written that's good stuff. But you now you watch. Some, some Yahoo will headline this tomorrow, Woman Mug After Leaving Country Club. And all the, all, the, all the people that belong to country clubs are going to get all freaked out. And the general manager, they're all going to call, Oh, we need more security around the country club. A woman got... So Des Moines Golf and Country and Glen Oaks and Urbandale, they're all going to get security guards and they'll fight with the city on who pays for them. Just because somebody just did it wrong. Anyway, the Johnson County Board of Supervisors passed a proclamation today in support of our Muslim sisters and brothers. KCRG TV reports that the proclamation is a response to recent comments by politicians and others <clears throat> regarding about Muslims after recent terrorist attacks by radical groups. It reads in part by We Are Distressed that our Muslim sisters and brothers are being unfairly forced to bear the fears of our nation. Who wrote this? This is... We are deeply... Deeply. We are deep... We are deeply, deeply concerned by words and actions that assault the safety and well-being of Muslims. According to the proclamation, Muslims have helped make the United States a great place to live, learn, work, and play. Man... Did the Islamics hire like a PR firm or something like that? Well, you know, Mac, this has been my my Facebook profile has been just uh, all a flutter uh, over a, a question I asked. Um, was that last week? Yeah, it must have been Thursday last week. I said, you know, Jesus famously said, uh, "Love your neighbor." Uh, when did Muhammad ever say that? Um, and my Facebook. That Facebook status is still getting comments on it today. That was Thursday. So almost a week later, we're still having people debate this because there are there are Christians um, who have jumped on the side of, um, you know, this Johnson County folks, and they want to make it crystal clear that not all Muslims are um, the same as ISIS and they're right. You know, Islam is a faith, much like Christianity, that is very divided. We have a lot of uh, denominations within Christianity, sects, uh, whatever groups, different 
uh, different believers. So as an example, Mac, you go to a Lutheran church or would Lutheran, I go to a Presbyterian church. Um, Frank, Seventh Day Adventist, we've got um, folks that go to non-denominational Bible churches that work here. Um, so yes, we're divided as Christians and yes, Islam is divided in the same way. And I posted on Facebook re- recently, the, the challenge in this is, Mac, there are Muslims that believe things that justify murder and killing non-Muslims, specifically Christians and Jews. It's not, these aren't individual Muslims. This is an entire group or sect or right. group of Islam that believes doing this. Right. So in order for that to be the case, there must be something within Islam that, that justifies that. They must find that somewhere in their holy writings that it's okay to kill and murder people. Well, if, that, if that is a part, if that is one of the Islamic sects that believes this, groups okay denominations that's fine but somehow that's justifiable i don't know of any christian denomination that does something like that i don't know of any current active christian denomination that justifies killing people based on their religious faith and catholics with abortion i'm serious but but catholics okay even catholics that believe abortion is okay are not condoning murder of people who have a particular faith now they may be condoning the murder of unborn children but they're not they're not condoning the eradication of people based on their faith we have islamic sects that want to get rid of christians and jews from the planet wherever they are and when exactly did muhammad die for our sins well of course muhammad did that no now he did not do that right but Islam is a completely different faith than Christianity, and I'm not saying that Islam is a sect of Christianity. That's not what I'm saying. I hope I didn't uh, uh, imply that at all. I'm just saying, similarly, Islam is a divided faith, just like Christianity is divided. Uh, Frank, you guys at the Seventh-day Adventist Church, you guys believe things that that, that I don't believe. I, I disagree with, sure. with teaching at the um, Seventh-day Adventist Church, and there are other Christian denominations um, that teach things that are different. But I would say that we have more in common than we have not in common. Then so what is the why? thing that all Islam has in common, and why is it that one particular sect um, is justifiably and, uh, murdering Christians and Jews? That's, that's the thing that I don't... Why don't we hear other Muslims distinguish their differences between the people who are the more radical variety who tend to want to kill and slaughter innocent blood? They do, we do, though. We do. We have Muslims right now throughout the world standing up and condemning radical Islam. Now, the president of the United States of America is having a a difficult time doing that. But we have Muslims around the world standing up and saying, we do not condone the actions of uh, these Islamic folks. Do they give us any verses and texts of the Quran to show us what their uh, nuance is and their well, beliefs? Mike, Mike Ahmed was on here last week and he made this perfectly clear. You can pick and choose verses in the Quran. You can pick and choose verses in the Bible. You know, it's right there in Leviticus. Stone a woman to death, etc., etc. So let's, let's, let's... The difference is Muhammad didn't change anything when he came. Jesus changed everything. And, and, you know, there may have been three or four people of faith who murdered somebody in the last, I don't know, 20 years here in America. Right. If that. And, and, and quite frankly, it, it disturbs me that we even have to talk about this because we're pandering to the low information voter who's trying to compare people who kill in the name of Jesus and, and quite frankly, let's make it clear. Let's make this very, very clear. If you're planning on killing someone, you're not a Christian. Let me make that very clear. The opinions of J. Michael McCoy are not that of the radio station, Chris Roloff, or anybody else. I, there are opinions. I agree with that. If you are planning on murdering one person or a hundred person, you are not a follower of Jesus. You can say you are, but you're not. He, he won't know you. I don't know you, he'll say. We're coming back live here on The Truth. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershide. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do 
is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones the same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile. That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. All right, 22 minutes before the top of the hour, top of the hour, Salem Radio Network News. Next hour, Tom Coates, Brad's on. Talking a little local politics and what's going on. It's been confirmed uh, that story about Mike Huckabee uh, staying in Iowa and living here for the next month or so, that's true. Okay. Uh, he is in the race. He's in it to stay. And uh, that was just a just something that happens in social media nowadays. All right. You, you were talking earlier about um, Muslims. Now, l- let, me, let, me, let me do the math. According to uh, Mike Ahmed. Now, this is Mike Ahmed. Mike, okay. Everybody knows Mike. Listen Former uh, Muslim, Egyptian, kind of royalty, uh, on with what was with Anwar Sadat when he was uh, murdered, assassinated. Uh, Mike Ahmed fled the country, came over here, learned Christianity, got mugged by Jesus, but obviously uh, pays a lot of attention because he's got family back there. There are three million radicalized fascist. And these are his words radicalized fascist muslims in america in america three million that is the number of people that live in the state of iowa now there may be another 97 million who are perfectly good and wonderful people but as we've talked about here if i hand you a bag of grapes and there's a hundred grapes in there and i tell you Three of them will kill you. Are you going to eat any of the grapes? So that's the challenge we have. I'm sure there are many peaceful Muslims, and they have every right to live in this country. I want religious freedom. Yes. I want religious freedom for me, and I want them for them. Yes. But we cannot deny the truth that there are 10% of those people, one out of 10 Muslims that you see in a day, could very well be radicalized in a fascist. But what does this conversation have to do at all with religion 
Well, wait a minute. Let me, let me back up here. And, and here's maybe part of the answer, Frank, to, to, to your question. It breaks my heart that there are Muslims in this country right now who are peaceful. Their faith, their religion gives them peace, teaches them to love their neighbor, teaches them to work hard, uh, teaches them to, to respect the government in which they live, and they are good citizens of this country. And it breaks my heart that there are Muslims today in this country who are hearing both on radio, TV, newsprint, social media, all around, that, that Muslims are terrorists, that Islam is filled with terrorists, and they're hearing these things, and it's got to be totally, it's got to be so difficult to be a practicing Muslim in the United States. It, it, it must be so hard right now to be a peace-loving, kind, caring Muslim in the United States right now. So what do you do? I don't know what we do. And, and, and this, is, this, is, this is the challenge. And I think that as followers of Jesus Christ, and Jesus, not only did he say that we should love our neighbor, that first we should love God and that we should love our neighbor. Not only did he say that, but he also said we should love our enemies. Now, I'm not saying that Muslim, a Muslim is my enemy. A Muslim is someone who uh, has a different faith. The, um, and they may not be my friend, they may not be my neighbor, but Jesus called me to love them unconditionally, with kindness, with gentleness, with respect, and to demonstrate to them the same kind of love that was demonstrated to me when Jesus loved me when I was a sinner. I had a great pastor, a friend of mine, a good pastor, Michael Mudloff, uh, who reminded me that all Muslims are sinners just like I'm a sinner that needs Jesus Christ. We need our sins to be forgiven. Um, Jesus died on the cross to forgive us of our sins. And it doesn't matter if you're a Muslim or you practice the Islamic faith at all. But as far as our immigration policy in the country, how do we distinguish between the two? How do we distinguish between the ones who who want to do us? I mean, we need to love everybody, that, but how do we distinguish between the ones that want to come here for legitimate reasons and the one who have more nefarious reasons that want to kill us? Uh, I, no, I, I think you bring up a, I think you bring up a good point, and that's why the, that's where the tension is, though, Frank. Right? The challenge is how does the United States handle this situation. But I think as Christians, our first step is to stay away from fear and anger and hate towards any, any people group. And we have to guard against that evil desire in our own hearts to hate someone simply because they believe something different. We've got to stop. As Christians, we've got to stop doing that. And we need, we need the Holy Spirit's help to give us hearts that love our Muslim neighbors. Even, Mac, even the three million that hate us, Jesus called us to love them as Christians. Now, as a country, as citizens, uh, as Americans, as politicians, as lawmakers, they have a responsibility to protect all the citizens, both Muslim and non-Muslims. Because these radical fascist Muslims will kill they will kill Muslims as well. They don't care. They'll kill anybody who's not on their side. And we need a government that will defend us against that, that will protect us from that. Well, you'll never, you won't have that with a Democrat in the office. It doesn't seem that way. It doesn't seem that way. It, 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 it seems as though too many people are concerned with being politically correct before they're, they're concerned with protecting their citizens. And as Christians, we have to love our enemies and whoever they are, we must love our neighbors as well as our enemies. And that's a difficult thing to do. Now you understand that's why Donald Trump is so popular. Yes. Because he does not bow. He does not bend. He does not falter when it comes to political correctness. Right. And yet people are offended. Well, who's offended? Are you offended? I'm not offended. Now, do I think that's something that you should say? No. But I'm not, the, I'm not the word police. Right. And I'm not going to not vote for somebody because he's not the sharpest knife in the drawer when it comes to the use of his language. Yeah. We found out what language will be used by the low information voters. They'll lie to us. They'll cheat us. They'll steal from us. They'll do whatever they can to get elected. You know, I don't know if you saw the other day, but NBC finally came out and printed a story that said they have people inside the uh, Obama administration that knew 
You could not keep your doctor. You could not keep your insurance. They knew that and that they allowed that narrative to run and run and run. And that calmed a lot of people down. That calmed a lot of people down when Obamacare, the American Affordable Care Act or whatever it is, was being presented. And then, of course, Nancy Pelosi did her famous, well, we'll find out what's in it after we vote it in. That's real smart. But I don't know. We got a problem in this country. We do. We and, do. And, and the enemy, uh, who is evil and not good, That's right. is uh, in the ears of anybody who doesn't have the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, this is going to come down to Christians against everybody else. Because we're the only ones willing to speak the truth. Well, I hope that we, too, don't harden our hearts and that our hearts can be open and our ears would be open that we would listen to the Holy Spirit. Because I will tell you, I will tell you, Mac, that um, and I said this before and shame on me for it. But it was difficult when I visited uh, Minnesota a few weeks ago uh, and I was up near the children's medical, the children's hospital up there. Uh, off the campus and there's a new newer starbucks there and it is uh it is predominantly frequent by frequented by by muslim men and and i saw a whole mess a whole bunch of muslim muslim men sitting at the coffee shop outside and i thought to myself i want a cup of coffee but i don't know if i want one that bad (laughs) so they're intimidating you I they weren't intimidating me. You were intimidated. I was intimidated, and I think here's the point of that to me. I was intimidated because the rhetoric that we use, and I'm guilty of this, the rhetoric that we use causes us to be afraid of Muslims in this country. And as a as a Christ follower, I should fear no one. I should I should fear no one. Um, I should definitely not fear even man that could that could destroy my flesh and blood. But we also need to be careful and remember that not all Muslims in the United States want to kill us. Yes, there are some that want to kill us, but not all of them. And that we should learn and listen to the words of Jesus and, and love those, love, love them all. One out of ten wants to kill you. And we, and we, and we, have to lo- we are called to love that one. As Christians, we are called to love that one. Now, as I said before, as a country, uh, as as politicians, as legislators, their role, the government of the United States must protect their citizens. That's what they have to do. We're coming back live here on The Truth 99.3. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. It's before the top of the hour, Salem Radio Network News at the top, and then Tom Coates. And Brad's on in the house talking politics. 
uh, in the next hour. I'm off to my church as we start our Christmas programs this evening, uh, 5 o'clock today, tomorrow, 5 and 7 o'clock, and then on Christmas Eve day, 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, all the odd hours. And uh, there's simply no reason for you not to come to Lutheran Church of Hope, West Des Moines campus, Ashworth and Jordan Creek Parkway, and spend some time with us. It's going to be an absolute uh, gorgeous, absolute gorgeous uh, event, and uh, we, we'd love to have you there. Okay, who do we have? Paul? All right, before I take Paul, you want to give away another one of the Be Wise, Be Ready? I do. Um, our good friends at MyPrepperDirect.com, MyPrepperDirect.com have given us um, another um, giveaway here. This is the all-in-one odd auto kit. This is food, water, first aid, warmth, and security. goes perfectly in your car. Uh, it has jumper cables, a tow rope, has food. Um, again, has the uh, no battery needed flashlight, uh, heaters, the blankets, uh, the whole bit. Uh, this is, I believe, I don't remember the cost on this. I want to say this is another $70 value. I think no, so. I don't think it's as much as the five-day kit, but um, we want to give this away absolutely free to the third caller. Uh, the call-in number is 515-244-0077. That's 515-244-0077. Uh, we want to give this away to you absolutely free. You can pick it up from the radio station if you're the winner before the holidays even. So this is the auto kit from MyPrepperDirect.com. All right, let's also go to the phones where... What's that? Can I play while I'm sitting in the studio? Yeah, sure. right. <laughs> uh, let's go to the phones where Paul is standing by. Paul, you're live in Max World. How you doing, Paul? Not too bad. Uh, the number one thing is that Paul went to Mars Hill. He wanted to find out what the people are like. It's important for the United States of America here, the Christians here in, to break open the Quran, the Hadith, and Sharia law, and find out exactly what's in it. So a person can actually take that information and go witness to these people. I've gone into a mosque, and I taught. i got to learn in- information about these people and correct things on that. Someday I won't be able to go in there, and I probably won't be able to walk out alive, according to the laws. I already know that. But it's one of those things they'll open you up. They'll, they'll let people in there because they want to convert people to Christi- from Christianity to Islam. But it's uh, also to be available to be apologetics to understand what the Bible actually teaches. And a lot of Christians don't do that. I agree with you, Paul. I, I you know, I, uh, um, so if, if I understand you correctly, you, you have actually shared the gospel, you've interacted with Muslims and I, I have to confess, you know, a lot of people criticize me on my Facebook page because I don't, I don't personally know any Muslims and, and, and I'd like to remedy that, but you, you say that, you know, um, some Muslims and have actually, uh, talked with them, read the Bible with them, shared the gospel with them, et cetera. Yeah, I go in there with the Quran and the Bible both. I would go into, and, and I went to the one on 63rd Street there. There's a little, uh, an old schoolhouse. Um, I went there on the corner there, and I got to talk to these people. I go in there, and I'll ask them questions, and they'll take me to the, the imam there. And, and uh, one day I spent almost eight and a half hours there. I had a, a young kid follow me around. He was trying to teach me the Quran, and I was showing him the things in the Bible back and forth of what the Bible agrees with and what the Quran believes in it. I understand where the Quran come from. I understand where the Hadith come from. I understand where... Muhammad got his information from. The church was falling apart at that time frame. The Talmud was getting taught as a Jewish tradition. It was all mixed together, and that's what he's got. If you read the Quran, you get to see the Bible in there, and then you get to see the some other kind of texts thrown in there, and you wonder where they're at. And the guys that you have on there that are they're Muslim that converted to Christianity, they come out and tell you clearly that if a person's going to be practicing whatever faith they're going to have. It doesn't make make a difference if you're an Orthodox Jew or whatever. You're, you're going to have to make a decision in your life to either be with or against somebody at some point in time. Even in our Christian life, Jesus says you're going to learn to love or hate. You're either going to love Christ and hate the things that Christ hates or, or something like that. You can't have both. You can't love this world and Christ at the same time. It's impossibility. Paul, you know, I'd like to have you on sometime and have you talk a little bit about that uh, witnessing you did. Uh, I don't know. Are you and I friends on Facebook? No, I uh, I call kind of regular. Yeah. I'm a Muslim, a Jewish uh, uh, guy calls a lot. All right. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have uh, uh, Frank get a phone number from you. I don't want you to say it on the air. I want you to, Frank, get a phone number from this gentleman so I give you a call. Paul, thanks very much uh, for calling. Okay. No problem. All right. Well, th- this is this is 
And we can't be scared off by the PC police. Right. We cannot. Right. We have got to stand our ground. But see, but see, here's what's going to happen. <laughs> here's what Christians didn't do. We didn't protect the laws that protected us. We allowed governments, federally, locally, to change laws, which says we can't be Christian. We don't have a First Amendment right. Here's how they did that. How did Betty and Dick Odegaard lose their business? Because gay people were under a protected class. And that protected class was a higher protection level than Christians. And th- that's, that's what the Muslims will do. The smart Muslims will come in and they'll start changing laws. They'll get legally voted in, change laws, and 20 years from now, praise God, I hope I'm home by then, but you won't be. You'll be here with your wife and your daughter and grandkids and whatever else you've got. And you're going to deal with the fact that you can't, you can't say anything on this radio station or any other radio station that's bad about Muslims. Do you think it's that because be they'll become a protected class? Absolutely. Yeah. And see, Christians never sought out to be a protected class because we always thought we lived in a Christian nation. We held on to that so long that that, that plane took off long ago. We should have had ourselves protected. We should have had the, the, the First Amendment is being absolutely thrashed in our court systems. And I don't know what it's going to take, but somebody sooner or later is going to have to stand up and say, here's what the First Amendment means, and you can't do that. And then don't allow them to make laws which said they can, Frank. But we are blessed when we're persecuted, reviled, and all manner of evil set against us. So the unbeliever will say that persecution to the Christian is a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's true. That's a true statement. That's one of the things we're going to have to worry about. All right. Um, we are going to uh, bid you adieu in this hour. The Salem Radio Network News is coming up next. Tom Coates along with Brad Zahn. Tom, what are you going to be, uh, what are you and Brad, do you think you're going to be talking about today? We're going to be talking about politics. Brad's been supporting uh, Donald Trump for a while now. He's, uh, as I understand it, going to run for re-election for his own seat in the yes. Iowa Senate. Yep, he is. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's not going to be any shortage of things that are very topical to discuss in the news with the presidential election. All right, so that's Tom Coates and uh, legislature Brad, legislator Brad Zahn, uh, next uh, half hour, uh, next hour, I'm sorry, in Max World. Uh, until I see you again, have yourself a very Merry Christmas. Love your family. And remember to forgive. This is, this is kind of a big deal. Jesus said, I'll forgive you like you forgive me. I'll forgive you like you forgive others. How, how are you forgiven? Because, man, you and I are wretches. And we need Jesus' forgiveness. So remember, as you forgive, you shall be forgiven. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.